George Pickett was a Civil War general known for leading Confederate troops in Gettysburg. Before the Civil War, while stationed at Fort Bellingham, Pickett was involved in another war, a boundary dispute between the United States and Great Britain called the Pig War. Today we're uh, in the Pickett House in Bellingham. We're in the part of town that's called Old Town. It's called Old Town because this is where the town started. This is probably uh, the oldest wood frame building in the city, not only in the city, but one of the oldest wood frame buildings in the Pacific Northwest. It has a profound significance uh, to the early pioneer period. In 1846, there was one mass of land called the Oregon Country, and that would include today uh, the states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming and Montana west of the Continental Divide and the province of British Columbia. And this had in the late 18th century been claimed by the British and the Spanish. They had contended over it, but the Spanish had, had dropped out and through a treaty had assigned their rights or their claim to the Oregon country to the United States. And so in 1846, the two nations agreed to divide the Oregon country along the 49th parallel from the Rocky Mountains, uh, which the British called the Stony Mountains. And the 49th would cut across all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. But there was one problem. Vancouver Island, which the Hudson's Bay Company had established in 1843, dipped below the 49th parallel. So the two nations had to decide how they were going to handle that. So they decided on a water boundary. And they just said, okay, so it's going to go along the 49th parallel to the middle of the Gulf of Georgia, which we now call the Strait of Georgia, thus through the southerly channel that divides Vancouver Island from the mainland. Now, I said channel singular because the San Juan Archipelago is right between Vancouver Island and the mainland. And there are two major channels that go around the San Juans to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. There's the Harrow Strait, which is to the west, and the Rosario Strait, which is to the east. So the British said, well, anyone can plainly see that it is the Rosario Strait, so you Americans can just go away. And the Americans said, why don't y'all talk United States talk for crying out loud? Anyone can see it's the Harrow Strait skedaddle. And so here's what they did. They said, okay, we'll hold these islands in dispute until we can determine what the proper water boundary is. Is it the Harrow Strait or is it the Rosario Strait? And until then, we'll just leave things as they are. And when Isaac Stevens became the first territorial governor, when Washington Territory was broken off in 1853, he says, Whatcom County is the northernmost county, and San, the San Juan Islands are part of Whatcom County, by God. That's part of the United States. Governor Douglas, the provincial governor on Vancouver Island, hears this and says, oh my goodness gracious, we're going to go through the same thing we went through when the Treaty of Oregon was signed. We were pushed out of our um, territory at Fort Vancouver. This is going to happen all over again. By God, I'm not going to let this happen again. So he establishes a sheep farm on the southern end of San Juan Island, Bellevue Sheep Farm. Brings over 1,369 head of sheep and agricultural products to plant and other animals, including pigs. 1859, there's been trouble brewing. A Berkshire boar, a big pig, is running loose from the Hudson's Bay Company, belongs to the British, British pig, strays into a garden that had been planted by an American. There were about 18 Americans on the island by now. The Hudson's Bay Company believed that they were squatters, that they were interfering with their plantation. The pig starts rooting in Lyman Cutler, that's the name of the guy that planted the garden. Pig starts rooting in his potato patch. Lyman Cutler goes to Charles Griffin, the agent of the Hudson's Bay Company, and says, I want you to keep that pig out of my potatoes. And Griffin says, keep your potatoes out of my pig. You're nothing but a trespasser. So the next morning, Cutler catches the pig in his garden. He chases it out of the garden to the edge of the woods and shoots it. And then suddenly realizes, uh-oh, 
I've killed somebody's livestock. This is something you just didn't do on the frontier. He goes to Griffin Cutler, the American goes to the British. He says, look, I shot your pig. I'll make restitution. Griffin says, that pig will cost you $100. Cutler says, $100? Well, I, I'm not going to give you $100 for a pig that ain't worth 10 If I catch you in my garden, I'll shoot you too. So, Cutler is threatened with arrest. The governor hires what they, call, what they called a stipendiary magistrate to come over and arrest Cutler and evict from the island the 18 Americans that are living there as trespassers. Well, word of this gets down to the commanding general of the Department of Oregon, a guy by the name of William S. Harney, Brigadier General, an irascible guy. Harney said, no one's going to threaten an American on my watch. And George Pickett is issued orders, Special Orders 872, July 18th, 1859. Pickett is ordered to abandon his post at Fort Bellingham and to proceed to San Juan Island to place his camp in a secure location and not allow the British to assume jurisdiction over American citizens. Those were his orders. And they steam over to San Juan Island and Pickett establishes his camp on Griffin Bay on the beach. And he posts a proclamation. And the proclamation, there's a third proviso of the proclamation says, this being United States territory, only the laws of the United States of America will apply. Well, these islands are in dispute. The governor of Vancouver Island finds out that there is a company of U.S. Army soldiers, 64 soldiers, suddenly on the southern end of San Juan Island, close to the agricultural operation. The governor dispatches a warship, HMS Tribune, 31 gun steam frigate, to find out what George Pickett's doing there. The British captain said, by what right are you on San Juan Island? George Pickett says, by the authority of the United States government. Well, it was by the authority of the commanding general. Harney had ordered him to the island. Pickett had taken upon himself to say, this being United States territory, only the laws of the United States will apply. So the British stipendiary magistrate arrives the day after Pickett and walks into Pickett's camp and orders him off the island. And if he doesn't leave, threatens him with arrest. Now, this is a solitary British law enforcement officer. British Pickett's got the 64 guys. He's got cannon. He says, no. He says, I don't recognize your authority. I'm not going anywhere with you, and I'm not leaving this island. And so what ensues is a standoff. Pretty soon, Pickett has been superseded in command by Lieutenant Colonel Silas Casey. Uh, word is sent back to Washington. Everybody just goes ape. This is the last thing the British need. It's the last thing, surely, that the Americans need. They decide to dispatch the commanding general of the United States Army, Winfield Scott. Now, he's 72 years old. I mean, he's, he's infirm. He's six foot five, 385 pounds. Winfield Scott steamer pulls up to the dock at Vancouver Barracks on the Columbia River. And Harney and Pickett are directed to go into Scott's cabin, whereupon he dresses both of these guys down for creating this crisis with the British. He's very upset. He supersedes Harney in command temporarily of, of the department and travels himself back over the Columbia River Bar and up into the Strait of Juan de Fuca to uh, negotiate with Governor Douglas a stand down. The two governments had agreed to jointly occupy the island. The Royal Marines would be in one camp, the Americans would be in another, the Marines would see to law enforcement uh, over British subjects, the Americans over American citizens. They would keep the peace so theoretically civilians couldn't call the military in. The two commanders could work things out. The San Juan boundary dispute was submitted to the Emperor of Germany for binding arbitration. 
It was the first time in modern Western history that binding arbitration had been used to decide a question between two countries. And so the Emperor of Germany, the Kaiser, Wilhelm I, appointed a three-man commission and they met for a year in Geneva. The two nations submitted arguments and counter-arguments. And then at the end of the year, they voted two to one that the Harrow Strait to the west was the proper channel. The British ab abided by the agreement and peacefully marched out of English camp on November 22, 1872. The Americans rushed up with a gigantic flag to run up the 80-foot flagpole, but the British had chopped it down. 